Hello everybody, welcome back to the Limit of Adhesion Season 4. This is the F3 Championship, we're at Round 10 and we're at Monza. My name's Gareth and joining me once again in commentary is Jules. Jules, how are you? Yeah, not so bad, not so great, but you know, let's, let's get on. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, yeah. And uh, as you can see from a lot of the cars on screen, and with that touching uh, video message at the beginning, this is our tribute race to Sir Frank Williams, who sadly passed away this month. And we are celebrating his team's illustrious career with a, a number of the cars featuring different Williams paint schemes throughout the years. Uh, apart from Stephen Cakebread's uh, McLaren there, which is a, a Mika Hakkinen livery there. But never mind. So to, uh, this is round 10, as I say, just uh, three rounds to go then in the championship. Rob Miller is homing in after a tremendous victory and a second place at the feature and sprint race at Spa. And it always feels nice to me to go from Spa to Monza. There's something right about that from so many years of F1. Didn't feel right this year, did it? Jules going to Zanvoort in the middle. No, no, not really. <laughs> Yeah, so um, we're taking a look at the team standings. You can see Race Ventura still on top, six points ahead of Stupid Aguri. So it's a real fight shaping up between those two. And the Rumblebees a little further back in third. And here comes, look at that, then the 1997 Williams, is that the Winfield one? The one year they were red? <laughs> yeah, is that? That's so number 88. Did. That's now David Lyon then from the 18. And you can see in the practice results, David Lyon on top of a 142.025 ahead of Rob Miller, Jordan Johnson, Nicola Lee, Gavin Kelly, Oliver Walker, Josh Kanemov. So rounding out the top eight. So a number of familiar faces there. But on pole, it's Rob Miller from the little and large team. David Lyon in second, Jordan Johnson in third, Gavin Kelly fourth, Nicola Lee in fifth, and then Oliver Walker in sixth. And look at all those Williams liveries there. That is... A really nice sight to see a couple of people still with their normal liveries and a few a couple of McLarens funnily enough then like we say but yeah this is a this is quite a nice sight with all these different Williams cars yeah I this think is Saudi. every single livery for Williams for the F3 on trading paints was utilized yes <laughs> indeed so here we go then getting ready for our feature race Rob Miller on pole in the compact Williams against David Lyon in the Winfield. Red lights are on. There's Green. We're racing at Monza then. He's out of the back popping out and going for it. Is that Chris White? Here they come then on the run down to the first chicane. Always a flashpoint in open wheel racing. Oh, someone's blinking in and out of existence there. And they're tight into the chicane. Oh, someone's going round. Oh. Yes, this is not a good start to the race then. We've got six, seven cars that look like in a pile up there. Yeah, Jules, what happened? Jam there. Uh, yeah. Like the, one of the other windfields got turned around by the car behind it and that just blocked the track. Ah, so a Williams got turned by a Williams there and then some more Williams crashed into the Williams and fortunately a number of Williams now in the pit lane due to the Williams accident. That's Meanwhile, right. back out front though. Here's Rob Miller coming through the Lesmos for the first time and he's being chased by David Lyon and look at this and Michael Messenger hot on the heels of Ter Millar in from the QRS team and looking to make the move early as they run down to the Scarish chicane. Got to watch out for an enormous bump that she just went over there. Yeah, you could see that. You saw the car moving quite seriously as he came through there. And Michael in the rocket livery that was never used. That was the one oh, before. Batty's oh, look at that. Yeah, Batty's gone round. And a double spin there. So if he doesn't get collected. Oh, he did get collected. <laughs> I was just saying, I hope he doesn't. And bang, he did. Meanwhile, back at the front then, there's David Lyon coming through the Parabolica to complete the first lap. He's still chasing Rob Miller, who's about one second to clear. Yeah, he's stamped Jim. his authority on this first lap, hasn't he? He really has, yeah. And here comes Nicola Lee then. Moving to the inside of Jordan Johnson, who's in a Martini Williams car. That's nice. Miller's gone around. Oh, Miller! Wow. Did not expect that then. Rob Miller making a mistake on his own in the first chicane then. 
and that's put him down to fourth place now. David Lyon now in the lead of this race from Jordan Johnson and Nicola Lee in third. So like six cars in the pit lane though still. Yeah, that's, that first uh, first corner accident was a big one and collected a number of drivers. And then we had obviously that second incident with Batty and I didn't see which car hit him. Nicola Lee diving to the inside then of Jordan Johnson. These two going at it through the Lesmos. And Jordan just holding on, looks like. Variante del Retifilio. I do love that name, that chicane. Of course, Sam Stott would just call it Aqua Minerale. Most likely, yes. <laughs> so, and we will, you can see there from the timing tower that Sam Stott not in this race. Uh, as is Nathan Parker also missing and the reason for that is they are serving a one race ban for picking up too many penalty points on their licences as a result of the incidents at Spa last time out. So just remind us then Jules about the uh, the penalty point system so obviously 12 points is a race ban and then what happens after that when the drivers come back? Oh, yep, yeah, they can come back then after that, but then from then on it's only six more points until they have to sit out another race. So the, oh, uh, I see. Oh, and uh, oh. a mistake there at the chicane there for Nicola. Yes, and I wonder if he was getting caught out there because there was a number of drivers rejoining the race after being towed and getting repairs. Yeah, quite possibly he was slightly distracted in his yeah. battle. Look at those, uh, those lap times on the screen there. 148 Ericsson and then Chris White and Winslade behind them doing a 146. So some it looks like those times are going to close in together and we're going to get some pretty good racing between those three drivers very soon. Yeah, no, no, looking forward to that. Yeah, and here we go. Michael Messenger getting through on tour Malarin. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of glad, glad we didn't. Yeah. Well, Messenger's really uh, bedded in nicely to the Formula 3s then since he made his debut in Formula 3 at Spa last time out. Kind of glad we didn't see that rocket livery actually in F1 because I think the uh, I think the current car that they've got looks a lot nicer than that. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. Definitely. It's not my uh, not my favorite of liveries. So Miller is, is starting to reduce the gap to the guys in the front after his first lap mistake. You'd expect that though, wouldn't you? Because he was um, yeah, mighty to get the pole and he, he is uh, really coming into his own in this championship now. I think though you see that Jordan Johnson and him are running a lower downforce setup than the other two of the top four. Even though it's Monza. Right. You, you can see the wing, wings here, the differences between Line, Jordan, Nicola oh, Lay yeah. and then Miller. Yes, you really can, yeah. Good spot there, Jules. And that's... Uh, Rob obviously ran the lower downforce set up at Spa as well, so obviously Jordan deciding... Well, it worked there with the feature win. Oh, replay then, off the start. See, ah, oh, that's... Yeah, that's the Rothmans car just getting into the windfield. And then... Oh. Yeah, that was the two title rivals. So Kelly in the windfield and Walker in the Rothmans. Wow. Yeah, big upset then, and... Uh, Rob Miller trying to make hay while the sun shines. Surprised so many more cars piled into that. I mean, I feel it was a bit clumsy, if I'm honest. I expect the guys would have been a little more careful. But meanwhile, then, here we got... Uh, that's the ledge, isn't it, in the Fly Saudi car? Yeah, that was... Uh, this is a replay still of Kelly recovering. Looks like he's got damage. Uh, yeah. Here's, uh, uh, that's uh, Winslade in the 83. It. Yep. Dropping in the Lesmos, so this must be a replay from earlier on, because he was ninth and then 11th, so, oh gosh, yeah, look, having to let all these cars go through before he gets back on. Just finding a gap in the traffic to get across. So he's lost an awful load of places there. And that's uh, a risky racer going around, isn't it? That's Greening. Stephen Greening, then, well, in the same reversing. place. <laughs> this is quite a fantastic recovery. Wow, bold, bold uh, reversing onto the track there. So if he gets away with that one, and it looks like he has. 
Meanwhile, back at the front of the race then, Jordan Johnson now just still 1.1 seconds behind line. Nicola Lay still in third, and he's very close behind Johnson once again, so recovering from outbreaking himself into T1 a lap or so ago. Yeah, and Miller's now now on the tail, so this is a four-way battle for the win. Wow, that's awesome. Riding on board with David Lyon then as he comes through the second chicane. And you can just see Johnson's car appearing as he, in between the uh, suspend, the wheel and the rear wing as he moves around the track. Flames flushing out the exhaust there as he changed gear. Did you see that? that was cool. Yeah, yeah. See, he likes to drive the, the McLaren as well in uh, GT3, which is always belching out flames. That's true, yeah. That's, uh, it's Lyon's preferred style then. It's the flaming car. Here comes Rob Miller then. This is on Nicola Lee and the battle for the podium through the Ascari chicane. Got to say, Such if Rob can hang on to him then uh, Nicola Lee's going to be easy pickings down the straight. That lower downforce rear wing. Good point, yeah. And here he comes then down to the, car uh, the Parabolica. But Lay should be able to follow better through the parabolica and get a better exit. So let's see where they can uh, come back at him in, into the into the chicane. Yeah, and these two had a massive, uh, great scrap last time out with the high downforce versus low downforce at Spa. Yeah. So this is very much battle rejoining. You see, he's not gaining on him, really, is he? He's not gaining, but he's not dropping him either. Oh no, now he is. A yeah, well, he had the benefit of the toe, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Kind of countered by Rob's uh, Miller's uh, lower downforce setup. Uh, yeah, another adventure for Greening. Well, Greening getting uh, getting it wrong on the on the loud pedal as he comes out of the first chicane. And who's it? That's Gavin Kelly then. Oh, second chicane. That's going to have left him feeling a bit dizzy in VR. And broke his wing as well. And broke his wing. Oh, it's going to be a long old race then for Kelly. Back on board with Nicola Lay. Still charging after Rob Miller. And this is where the, the part of the track where the high downforce setup is really going to pay dividends. Going through that second chicane and then the two Lesmos. And then if he can just hang on down this long straight to the Ascari chicane. I love the Ascari actually. It's... Uh, it's such a fast corner, but then you just feel you can feel the grip just sort of bleeding away as you see so you hang on for dear life as you go through the right hand part of it. Yeah. It's a good fun corner. It's like Miller's starting to get away a bit here. Yeah. Yeah, you do you kind of expect it really, don't you, with so so few corners and so many long straights here at Monza. And what's going on at the front then? Was that just Lyon having a bit of a transponder issue? Yeah, he lost his lap for Miller. Yeah, and the gap's come down slightly. It's under a second now. Johnson to Lyon. Here they are. So Lyon, Johnson, Miller, Nicola Lay, Messenger, Malarin, Weaver. Well, one of the Weavers up there then. That's good. Which one is it? It's Jake Weaver, isn't it, from the MMPR team? Yeah, only Jake here today. Yeah, and then we've got Chris Forrester and Chris White from the CC Racing Team running 8th for 9th. Winslade is in 10th. The Ledge is in 11th. And then we've got Kelly. Is that Manuel Cruz then behind him? Oh, the Ledge going cone yeah. shopping. <laughs> he's got his cone and he's off. Yeah, oh, hey, spits it out of the back. Tell me how long and we can get. Oh, listen to this then. We've got uh, Nicola Lee trying to bargain with Miller. They drag him along so they can get to uh, Lyon and Johnson up ahead. Yeah, that's a strategy for sure. I don't think we've ever had a, a bit of deal or no deal going on between rival teams before. This is quite fascinating. Oh, the confidence of these guys as they come out of the Ascari using all of that runoff on the kerb. So only halfway through the race, and about half of the, the uh, grid have done the pit stop. Yes. I imagine that <laughs> they're going to have to do another one that half. Yeah, they're not going to make it on the after that. Oh, looks like Johnson's got a run here. 
Absolutely, here he comes. Jordan Hi, Johnson. He goes defensive to the inside. Giving him all the space. Well, he's just kind of opened the door there to Johnson, who's just slung shot past and into the lead of this race then. Uh, yeah, a little surprised by that. I didn't feel like Lyon defended that uh, particularly hard at all. He's in the slipstream as they come to the second chicane. See drivers posting new fastest laps. Personal bests further down the order. Chris White, Winslade. The ledge now in the pit lane, so I'm wondering if he's going for his scheduled stop. Yeah, the window's open, so it could be. Unless he's had an off. Yeah. Well, I wonder if he picked up a bit of damage with the cone and the curb popping. Maybe he damaged his wing a little bit. I did actually find that the cone slows you down if you've got it under your front wing. <laughs> like, you know, about 10, 15 kilometers an hour, I think, from what I remember. Well, that's a heck of a lot, isn't it? Yeah. So you want to get rid of that if you've got one of those stuck in your front wing. Yeah. Here it comes out back out of the pit lane then. And uh, this is one of those ones where you, you know, that uh, pit exit line is so long because you're, you're so close to the corner before you get there. So you really compromised turning into the corner. And uh, a couple of cars sweeping past him. And David Lyon into the pits then from second place in this race. New fastest lap from Miller as well at the same time. Yeah. I say I like the ledges uh, livery. Um, that wasn't actually in Trading Paints uh, when the news of Frank Williams passing came on. So obviously some people were rushing, I guess, to get it up uh, onto the the F3 selection of paints. Yeah, and I'm glad that you did choose it because uh, yeah, I've, I've got a, I've quite partial to the uh, the Saudi livery it was before when I started really watching F1 wow look at this then Winslade and White in the Parabolica drags drag race down the uh, the main straight then here they come wow White's just got so much more straight line speed look it's like Winslade's running quite high down Fuzz yeah White's running, oh, a bit of a lock-up as he came through the chicane. Yeah, Winslow's wing's looking like a barn door, isn't it? Compared to uh, White's just ahead. But yeah, the, the, the Canon slash Labatt's livery that um, White's running, that's that sort of my era when I got into F1. Yeah, yeah, mine as well. But as I say, I do, I do like the Saudi car. And there's a there's a lovely Tamiya, I believe you can get or could get back in the day off that car. So oh, to the it. inside in the Lesmos. <laughs> well, that's that's ballsy. <laughs> well, that's what he's doing with that downforce. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I was saying earlier. It's going to really help him through the second chicane and the two Lesmos, but then he's just got to defend like crazy down these long straights, well, and all the cars are piling in now. Johnson, Miller, Lee, Malarin, all in the pit lane. Line's already pitted, as we know, so we wait to see where he is. He's coming through the Parabolica now, but Johnson's already back out. As is Lee, and has is Miller. Miller going through the safety car, though, and... Ow! I thought they were supposed to be oh, ghosted. I think Miller thought that as well. Yeah, surely they would be ghosted until they went past the cones, but no, Miller... He's just had to tow, look, and he's back in the pit lane and now losing a huge amount of time. Well, that could be pivotable. Pivotal. Kelly pivotal. and Walker both doing poorly. Kelly's got a pit again, almost certainly. This was a time for a good score for Miller. Let's see Yeah. if he can get back out there and get some points as Johnson messes up the chicane. Launches over the sausage there. Yeah, so Weaver and Winslade now exiting the pit lane. Yeah, Kelly's taking another stop now, so that will be his fuel stop. That is, yeah, good spot there. And uh, we see Chris Forrester now in eighth place. Chris White now up to sixth because he hasn't stopped yet. I 
assume. I would have thought Miller would have had a quite a quick toe, seen as he's he, he was in the pit he lane. Was in the pit lane. <laughs> yeah. The mechanics got to run over there. Yeah. So the ledge running in ten for the moment, then an under attack from Stephen Batty as they come down to the chicane. On the outside of the second exit, that's a nice move. Batting out to 10th place then. Interesting between 99 and Lee. That's, yeah, Miller and Lee under investigation, as you would expect. Not quite sure what the, uh, what the decision should be with that one, actually. So I'll wait to see. I'm glad I'm not a steward. Just the humble. White Weaver and Forrest have made up 34 places between them. <laughs> That's astonishing, isn't it? Look at this, though. No, so White is in the pit lane now. And he and Winslow, did ju Winslow just up past him before the pit stops had shaken out. So we wait to see where he comes out. He's pitting up two laps later, isn't he? Yeah. And he's up the exit now. This is the battle between Manuel Cruz and Stephen Greening. Yeah, Greening's had a couple of spins, but he's just made his way into the points. Yeah. Here comes Chris White then, rejoining the race in eighth place. Oh, Winslow's just had a horrible lap then, 2.10. So White's back ahead of Winslow. The battle resumes. High downforce versus low downforce. These are always fun, aren't they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Johnson now two seconds in the lead then from David Line, Inching his way clear. Lee's now like five seconds back, which is uh, quite surprising actually, because I thought he would be right on the gearbox of Line and Johnson. Well, he got a bit delayed, didn't he? By Miller. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Took him a while to get going again. Don't know if he has any damage either. God, brain fart. Yeah, we forgot about that. Wow, look at that. They're running 143s at the front. That's some rapid pace. Well, Greening's in the 43s as well as his best lap. Well, he is a rapid driver when he's uh, pointing in the right direction. Yeah, only Jordan, Johnson and Miller have got into the 42s. Yeah. Miller yeah, is still showing down in 17, so a lot of work to do to get any points here. Although he's had three drop rounds of zero, so any point he does get, he will get to keep. Half left, half left. Burnett just uh, playing hot potato with his wheel, apparently. Thank you. Looks like he's letting the leader through. Oh, okay. Just uh, all I heard was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was past left. Anyway, Mill, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, Forrester and Winslade are now. Sorry, White and Winslade are now battling. Once again, yeah, here we go then. And coming down to T1. So it's quite fun to see them all with their uh, with their standard wheels. Not many cars have changed wheel colour for this one. So uh, they kind of remind me of RC cars in a way, actually, where, where the drivers would often have like brightly coloured wheels to help distinguish their cars from competitors. Oh, nearly side by side into the braking zone for... Second chicane. Wow, White really launched his car into there. He knows this is the bit where he's under attack. Winslow's so close through the second Lesmo. Can't find his way through though. We've only got a lap and a bit left though. This is awesome racing. So, two rounds of the championship to go after this week then, Jules, and we're heading to Suzuka and then to Bathurst in Australia. It should be a very meme-worthy combination. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be interesting. The Suzuka should suit the cars. Yeah. 
Look at that then, Winslow getting through in the Parabolica, but we know he's down on straight line speed compared to White, so we wait to see what happens with that battle. Here's Miller though, he's back out on track, and he's fighting for the final point against Manuel Cruz. And there's three cars just ahead of him as well, and you could potentially scoop up a few more points if he can get this done fast. Yeah, no, he's past Cruz now, so he's on a point. Yep. And as you say, every point matters yep. for and Miller in this Kelly championship. Quite a decisive round then in terms of uh, the championship. There's Stephen Batty under attack from Will Burnett with the bright pink wheels on his Williams. Yeah, a line looking to put a lap on them. Yeah, steaming through. There goes Line. He's passed, passed by Burnett. Uh, moves out the slipstream for Batty. Where's Burnett going though? Oh, he's hit both of I'm them. I'm so sorry. That's my, completely my fucking bad. Sorry for the poor language there from Burnett. And he's just taken out David Lyon, who's just towed to the pits from second. <laughs> no. Well, that'll be another place for Miller, who's actually made up to 12th because obviously he was also fighting Burnett and Batty there. Yeah, so. Uh, Few freebies for, for Miller there. Wow. Expects a few dollars to go from the little and large team to Burnett. Oh, big lock up there from Zach Cruz. Just nearly taking out Batty in the chicane, but he locked the brakes and held uh, onto it. I think it's Costa. Batty's oh, it's Costa. Crabbing. Oh, it looks off. Oh, well, he, yeah, because of that incident. Yeah, sorry, that is Roberto Costa. Well, oh, I haven't even seen him all race, actually. Oh, be careful, Roberto. Damaged car, you don't want to try and pass in the Lesmos. Running out of time to do it, though, so he's going to have to do it soon. Yeah. So Nicola Lay now up into second place from Jordan Johnson. Michael Messenger now in third and heading for a podium. Tom Lauren's in fourth. Jake Weaver's in fifth. Wow, what an amazing result for Jake here. Chris Forrest is in 6th, Winslade's now in 7th, so he has got past Chris White. And the race winner though, Jordan Johnson, once again, from the Race Ventura team, picking up another victory. Oh, he's happy with this one. And who can blame him? That was a great drive, great move for the win on uh, David Lyon down the main straight into T1. Ragazzi! <laughs> <laughs> Tour Malaren coming home fourth place and that's a storming result for Tour there after a couple of difficult rounds with the F3 the Vettel impression still going on in the background <laughs> yeah love it here's Jake Weaver then coming home for a tremendous fifth place so delighted for him yeah I haven't seen didn't see much of him in the race but he quietly made his way up through the standings yeah is that his best Formula 3 result absolutely yeah it no, is. totally is it's a storming result and a massive haul of points for the MMPR team and Chris Forrester coming home sixth as well That's I think that's his best feature race result so congratulations to Chris we remember the disappointment he had at Hungary on the final tour dropping in the last corner so Jordan Johnson wins the race from Nicola Lee Michael Messenger in third Tor Malaren in fourth then we had Jake Weaver Chris Forrester Gareth Winslade Chris White Lawrence Owen Jenkins coming home P9 and Graham Barsley rounding out the top 10 great result for the MMPR team then with two cars in the top 10 that's really going to impact their team standings and we look forward to seeing that in a couple of screens time Oliver Walker maintains his lead at the top of the standings now five points clear of Gavin Kelly and Rob Miller is not that far behind, but he didn't gain as many points as he needed. So it's going to be crucial when we get to Suzuka and Barfest how many points he can pick up. Yeah, no, he was looking at a second, third, even possibly a win there until the uh, mishap in the pit lane. Yeah, Jordan Johnson up to fourth place as well ahead of uh, James Garlick. And we see a few places moving up and down further down the order as well. Oh, here's the replay of that critical error from Will Burnett then. P9 
penalty car 69 minus 10 championship points and four license points for this one well, oh, he, he admitted it didn't he on the radio <laughs> yeah I love the two wheel stunt driving that's pretty cool <laughs> yes And Chris White suggested that we do a, uh, a long jump championship, which I'm very much looking forward to uh, getting that underway. But maybe we could also do a bit of stunt driving championship, see how many, how long you can last on two wheels. Yeah. Oh, it looks like we've got the driver standings again, missing the team standings. But I would guess that Race Ventura are now topping them. Well, they already were, weren't they? But uh, yeah, I think they they'll be extending in their advantage. Because didn't score, but Little and Large didn't score much. Walliams. Yeah. Walliams? Don't recall them scoring. Well, look, uh, I think, yeah, Graham Bardsley was just rounded out the top 10, didn't he? So uh, Yeah, and, and Walker didn't score, so Rumblebees didn't get anything. No. But the one I really want to see is the MMPR team, so we'll have to wait until the sprint race video, which will be coming up next on our channel. So don't forget to check that one out. There's a replay of Kelly losing it in the second chicane. What a race where it uh, might have gone wrong for his championship. But five races to go. Two more rounds after this. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video. Come say hi to us on Discord and thelimitofatesian.com and Facebook as well. Thanks, Jules. See you next time. Bye-bye. See you next time.